Injuries caught on camera. Lights, camera, lawsuits? Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome back for another Presser Law Fridays at 5. Go to your local grocery store, convenience store, or even gas station, and you'll notice they all have one thing in common, video cameras. Now, while the purpose of these cameras is primarily theft deterrence, they can also capture injuries such as slip and falls or trip and falls. However, businesses rarely provide these accident videos voluntarily. They don't want the injured party to have the evidence of what actually happened. As a result, it often takes the filing of a lawsuit to obtain these incident videos. Even after a lawsuit is filed, businesses continue to fight production of the incident video to the injury victim. Instead, they assert that these videos are privileged and should not be seen by the injured party until after the injured party has testified under oath. Now, while this may initially seem like a reasonable request, you should know two things. Number one, sworn testimony from the injury victim may not occur until years after the event and after memories have faded. Number two, these same companies who don't want to show the video to the injury victim eagerly give it to their own employees before they give their own sworn testimonies. So why do they do this? The reason for this is simple. Businesses try to exploit the passage of time and fading memory by painting injury victims as people who can't recall the event. In contrast, they'll point to how their own employees' knowledge of the incident is vastly superior, of course after watching the video. Businesses hope that this will influence a court or a jury as to whose testimony they should find more credible. If you've been injured in a slip and fall or trip and fall and there's video of the incident, you need someone who's going to fight for you and fight for the production of that video prior to you giving your sworn testimony. I've won this battle in the past and have had the court order that the business produce the video prior to my clients giving sworn testimony. However, it's within the court's discretion when the incident video has to be produced. So as the battle for the production of incident video rages on, there are still some things you can do to help your claim. These include properly documenting the scene and making sure you note how you fell, what caused you to fall, and where it came from. These will help your case as it moves forward. For more information on this and other topics, check out some of my videos and blogs at www.findyourjustice.com. We'll see you back here next Friday for another Presser Law Fridays at 5. Presser Law, fighting for justice, fighting for you.